Welcome to release question 204 for casting math. It says, what is the slope of a line parallel to the line below? I want to show you a couple different ways you could do this one. So let's do what I think is the easier way first. I notice I have a point in the crosshairs right there. That's 2, negative 5. And then I'm going to find another one that's right in the crosshairs of, a, of those grid lines there right there. That would be 4, negative 8. And so I think the easier way to think about this is, okay, think if you're running uphill or downhill. I like to talk about Super Mario Brothers, and so the original Super Mario Brothers. Think of that, Super Mario Brothers 1, in other words. To advance in the level on your TV screen, you always had to move from left to right. And so that's going in the direction you need to move. He would be running, Mario would be running to advance in the level, would be running downhill, that would be a negative slope. Running uphill would be a positive slope, or in other words, a positive, well, in other words, it's a positive slope. Okay, so running uphill, that's what I'm talking about. Uphill, positive slope, running downhill as you move left to right, a negative slope. So this should be a negative slope. You just need to really count this up. Do your rise over run idea. You run, you're running back and forth, and you're rising, you're going up and down like the sun rises, the sun sets like that. So slope we talked about it before, we're talking about it again, is rise over run. And I always go from left to right, just makes things easier. So the run, since I'm going from left to right, for me, always is going to be positive if I'm going from left to right. So I'm going here, one, two, to get to that point. So I have a run of positive two. And then my rise, I'm actually going down by three. One, two, three. So my slope should be negative three over two. This is one way to do this. I want to show you, though, an alternate method. <coughs> an alternate method, excuse me. So here's an alternate method. You could do this right here, this point, and this point. You could find what those points are. This is the point 2, negative 5. You should be aware of how to do a question like this in this way as well. Uh, this would be the point 4, negative 8. And so you have this equation. Maybe you remember this from your algebra class. I hope you do. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is your x1, y1. I think that's the best way to label it since it comes first. If I'm moving from left to right, I'm going to label this as x1, y1. As I move from left to right, this would be my x2, y2, my second x value, and my second y value. If I label those, and I make sure I label them correctly, plugging them in, it should be really simple. So here's x2. That's going to go on the bottom. I want to find y2 first, though. So negative 8 minus, this is a negative 5. So be careful here. When you plug it in, minus a negative 5. Put that in parentheses for me. If you ever plug in negatives, always a good idea to use parentheses. Uh, and then x2 is 4, and x1 is 2. So you have x2 minus x1, that's just straight up 4 minus 2. This will change to negative 8 plus 5, minus a negative becomes positive. 4 minus 2, that would just be 2. So you have negative 3 on the top over positive 2 on the bottom. Well, would you look at that? Same answer, just as we should have expected. Just different ways to do the same problem. I think you should notice, though, that this is easier. You just have to do pictorially, think of how far do you go to the right or left. And since I always move from the left to the right when I'm doing a slope, I'm always just saying how far do I move to the right and then how far up or down do I go from there. So either way you do it, 204, you should get choice A it looks like. So 204, choice A, negative 3 halves.